Hello everyone, welcome to the Thursday show. I'm Pastor Chelsea and I'm so glad you're joining us this week. And you recognize this face, the one and only Pastor Dan who is with us again today. Pastor Dan, yeah. I always love when you come on the Thursday show. Um, I think I'm a regular guest star. You like, yeah, it's a, You know those talk shows, they have those people that just keep coming yeah. back no matter what talk show it is, they just keep recurring guests. I'm your I'm your recurring guest. Maybe you'll make the credits if you yes. keep, if you keep showing back. Eventually, up. that will be the goal. Well, this past <laughs> weekend, you preached an incredible message. Mm. You talked about family. You talked about parenting, about um, leaving a legacy, and I thought it was such a good message. So that's a compliment, right oh, there. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That we should kind of condense it and do like a Cliff Notes version in the Thursday show today. Yeah. What do you think about that? I love it. I love the idea. The the whole message itself was one that I had to kind of preach to myself too first, mm. which is, well, those are usually the best ones. Yeah. They're, they're convicting, they're never fun in the prep, but they end up being some of the best ones because it's what the Lord's been laying on my heart, so. Well, that leads me to my first question for you. Before we get into the specifics of the message, what was the thing that God was teaching you through preaching this message? Because yeah. when, when you write a message, often it convicts yourself first and foremost, like you were saying. So what was the thing God taught you through this Yeah, message? well, for those of you who weren't here Sunday and you're going, well, what was the message about? It was about parenting. And uh, for me, when I when I think of parenting, uh, probably the big takeaway that I, at the very beginning, I taught, a funny illustration was that you don't get a manual um, as a parent, mm -hmm. like you get you get your kids right. You have mm -hmm. them whether whether you've adopted, whether you biological, whatever it is. You get these kids who you're supposed to raise and then send them off someday to be good human beings in the world, you know. And as mm -hmm. Christians, also help them hope they, they find the Lord along the way. Um, there's no book that says, "Hey, this is how it's done," and that to me was the toughest part about parenting. Um, and, and how to handle that. And so, so as the Lord started talking to me about that, is like, how do we help people do this? And, and there's not a five-step process to parenting. Uh, I think I, I referred to it in the message uh, this last weekend as more of a choose-your-own-adventure book mm, where you choose good. A or B, right? And then the, the problem is, is, you know, in those books, I, I'm one of those guys who likes to, after I choose one one way, I come back and say, hey, what was the other way? Yeah, I do that too. You don't get that in parenting. Uh, uh, you use A or B, and then once you've made your choice, you live with that choice. And, and how, though, do we make sure that we're parenting and making sure that during while we have these kids for these 18 years or whatever, how many years you have them, how are we making all the time we have them count? And mm. and that to me is what hit me and that's kind of where we started with everything. Mm, I love that. Well, and you said that there's no like manual for how to do that. But what I love is scripture always speaks to life and always speaks to what we're going through and the Lord gives us his wisdom. So maybe it's not like a full step-by-step -step manual like we would like, Yeah. but you referenced a passage in Deuteronomy um, known as the Shema, which really speaks to this idea of leaving a legacy with your kids. And so the first two verses you read were verses four out and five, which say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And that passage was given to Israel to be really like the heartbeat mm -hmm. of what they believed, how they lived. It was a prayer that they repeated all throughout the day. And what follows right after those two verses is a command to pass it on. I was wondering if you would read verses six and seven that speak to how we take that Shema and how we pass it. Yeah, and the word here is actually where we get the word Shema. So that's mm -hmm. how that's translated that, hey, we're supposed to listen to this. Yeah. This is very important. Love the Lord with everything that you have. And it goes on then, it says, all these commandments that you have, in verse 6 says, these commandments that I give uh, you today are to be on your hearts. And then it says in verse 7, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. And essentially it's saying, hey, all these things that you're doing, you need to be teaching them to your kids, and, and not just when maybe you think of it, but all the time. Mm -hmm. they, they have these when words I talked about in my message sit, walk, lie down, get up. Mm -hmm. Essentially, at every moment of the day, you're supposed to be teaching your children how to shema, how to mm -hmm. listen to what God says, how to love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what I love too, what, you know, we're used to our American culture where it's like mom, dad, and kids live in the home, maybe not even that always. But in their Israeli culture, when they were speaking this, everybody was together yeah. all the time 
grandparents, aunts, uncles, strangers, neighbors, like they were all together. And so this wasn't just a, if you're a mom or if you're a dad, you do this. This was really for everyone to yeah. participate in passing on this heartbeat of hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It was something that they shared collectively. And I love that you passed that heart along too in your message. But what I wanted to do today is you had an amazing visual aid Sunday that really helped, um, I don't know, it, it made it real, I guess, to think about how much time we actually have with our kids or with your nieces or nephews or grandkids or whatever the case may be. So would you share that visual aid with us? Yeah, um, the, the visual aid actually is gonna come from a company called Orange and Orange is a, a nonprofit community ministry that says, hey, we wanna help parents and the church kind of connect in how we do that. And and so as we look at how much time we have with our kids, it can freak us out a little bit. Yeah. But but the CEO of Orange, Reggie Joyner, he says, says, when you see how much time you have left, you tend to get serious about the time you have right now. And for a lot of us, um, I know for me as a dad, I, I want to be intentional about the time I have with my kids. And so if I don't think about how much time I actually have left, then how am I going to be able to do that? And mm -hmm. so so what that means is when we um, when we get a kid, right? When, when you have a kid, when you get it at uh, the store, when you get, yeah, the store, wherever you're picking up store. your children these days. No, no. When when a child is born at the newborn age, mm -hmm. um, there are 936 weeks until they graduate high school. 936 weeks. So the illustration though is if we put all those and said one week is one marble, how many marbles we'd have? 936 marbles in a jar, and mm -hmm. it would look like this. And this represents 936 weeks. That's wow. 936 marbles in one jar. I was never good at estimating in school, so I don't know if I would have guessed 936, but that's yeah. crazy. It's, it's a lot of marbles. Um, and before you have kids, you have all your marbles. I, I don't know at the end of this journey. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have our marbles at the end yeah. of the journey. But we have to be intentional saying, okay, with the, this time we have, when we get a kid, are we being intentional? And you feel like when you look at that, that's a ton. Mm -hmm. but but it goes by so quick and so for those of us maybe your kids are further on the journey what we talked about is at each stage how much time do we have left mm -hmm. and so when we look at the next stage it's kindergarten right mm -hmm. and so in kindergarten you have 624 weeks left which is still a lot of marbles mm -hmm. but you're seeing how the significant change yeah just from the time they hit kindergarten. That's just five or six years, because you're like five or six when you start yep. kindergarten, and so that's crazy how many how many fewer weeks you have at that point. Yeah, I just have a son who finished kindergarten, oh and so I'm looking at this going, this jar is very real mm. to where my family's at yeah. right now, um, with him specifically. And then the next stage is, I like to think of middle school. That's a, mm. that's a big uh, coming of age when you hit yeah. that thing. A lot of hormones and things like that, and so, that is this jar right here, which has 364 marbles left. Wow. 364 weeks until they graduate. And I made, mm -hmm. I made the joke um, on Sunday morning mm -hmm. that by this point in time, we as parents have lost two thirds of our marbles. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and so we get that. But, but this one, this is such a transformational time in a kid's life when it comes to middle school. But look how much time yeah. has already happened. Yeah. And so we, a lot of times we think, oh, middle school, it's a great time. I mean, it's a crazy time, but my kid's now learning. But there's so much time even before mm -hmm. that. But, but, but when we get to here, we're going, man, it's going quick. Yeah. And then by the time they hit high school, it gets even further down the road. 208 weeks man. from the time they enter high school when your kid signs up for their freshman orientation, whatever high school they go to, 208 weeks left um, until they're done. And I mean, you look at that jar, that is... Yeah, almost empty. Yep. Now this is for me, I have two kids. I have, uh, I have three kids, but two of them are in high school now. Mm -hmm. One just finished their freshman year, one just finished their sophomore year. And, uh, and so I So this is tell also you, you. Yes. And so I'm getting these. Sometimes my son, um, I wish it was flipped sometimes, but... Um, <laughs> Depending on the day, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and for a lot of us currently, we're in a grad season, right? Like going mm -hmm. to all these grad parties and people graduate. Um, but, but when we hit that final year of high school, before that graduation stuff hits, there are 52 weeks left. And that's what it looks like right there. 52 weeks. Wow. And uh, I mean, that one, it doesn't even cover the bottom of the jar. Um, yeah. yeah, it's so few, it's crazy. Yeah, wow. now I I'll tell you, you're still gonna have investment in your kids after this. Yes. It happens, um, but 
when they hit that 18, that's the, the age in our world that says, oh, I can be on my own, I can do that. And I'll tell you, if you have kids who've left the house, you can probably attest to this, that you turn it, your role changes a little bit, um, mm -hmm. where you know early on you're caregiving, you're coaching, you're doing that. I, I call this phase when, when they're out of the house as consultant, which means you give them their, your advice, but they don't have to listen to yeah. it. Um, and and so so the the real work happens when you look at this passage in Deuteronomy is is hey are you being intentional with these weeks you have left mm -hmm. um, with where your kids at? I think my my oldest daughter has 110 um, weeks left. My my uh, next daughter has 162 weeks left, and then my son has 630 weeks left. And I'm sitting here going as a dad and, and with my wife as parents. What are we doing to, to make sure my kids have the best chance to follow the Lord, to make sure they're the best human beings when they leave the home, and to leave a legacy that goes beyond us mm -hmm. um, and training the next generation? Well, I just think the quote, you read it just earlier, but saying it again, I think is so perfect for this moment that when you see how much time you have left, you tend to get more serious about the time that you have now. And I think that's the purpose of this. So if you're at home right now crying, grab grab some <laughs> Kleenex, dab away the tears, because I think this is a good sombering moment, yeah. but it's meant to then move you to action and to, to create intentionality with you, with your kids, with your grandkids, with whoever you have, so that you're able to impress upon them your faith and the importance of following the Lord. Yeah, and, and here's the deal. It doesn't just stop with parenting. Yeah. Um, it's the call of the church to come alongside as well um, and train up that next generation too. So often as the church, and, and, I, and I fully believe this, as a student ministry pastor for over 15 years, now as a family, family pastor, mm -hmm. it is the primary uh, role of a parent to disciple their kids. Right. That, that's their job. That's what we, that's, as a believer, we signed up for that, to, to be a discipler in our mm -hmm. kids' lives, to be intentional with our discipling. That's what this means to train your kids. But... We don't have to do it alone. Mm -hmm. it, it also, we get the church to come alongside, but the church needs to be the church. Yeah. We have as, as a church a responsibility to come alongside kids, whether we're single, we don't have kids yet, uh, maybe we're an empty nester, our kids are gone, you're like, oh, I've already mm -hmm. done this. No, we get the opportunity to invest in other kids, um, but that has to be intentional too. Mm -hmm. And we have to be willing to maybe get out of our comfort zone, maybe get out of our seats sometimes, yeah and say, hey, I'm willing to be a part of something bigger. And that is this idea of the Shema, of training up people, teaching them how to love the Lord with everything they have. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's our role. And that, that you can tell a little bit, I get a little passionate about it, I get excited, <laughs> um, because that's what God's called us to do. Absolutely. And so I think our takeaway for us is no matter where you're at, whether you have kids, whether you don't, to be intentional and to help raise up the kids that are around us, to put yourself out there, maybe start volunteering this summer with our children's ministry, with our student ministries. Um, if you're a parent, maybe take some time as a family to be intentionally spending time in, in God's word or reading or worshiping together. And you had a great resource too, you were yeah. telling me about so, earlier for parents specifically. So you you notice I was able to tell you how many weeks my kids have left. I did notice um, that. I, I personally don't have a jar of marbles at home yet, although I'm actually praying to I know where say, you could find yeah, a few. Yes, I can get a few. But but there's actually an app that kind of helps you out with this. It's called Parent Q. Q is the C U E. Okay. Uh, Parent Q. You can download that app and then you put in your kid's birthday. Um, it's, a, it's a secure app, so you can put in your kid's birthday and their name. And then what that does for you is it'll actually tell you how many weeks you have left until graduation, which is scary, I yeah. get it. But what that helps us do is be really intentional with what we have on our time. And so I've actually, this last week, had um, parents and grandparents talk to me about, hey, where can I get the marbles and jars? Because um, they want to do this with their kids mm -hmm. and uh, or their grandkids or the people that they have in their life. You can go on Amazon, and these are one gallon jars. Um, I bought 500 marbles at a time. It can get a little pricey when you're buying this many, um, but I tell you what, it's worth it. And, I, and this is the challenge I gave everybody at, at, on Sunday, was what happens if when we take these jars and we say we're gonna pray for our kids, if every week that we take one more marble out and we set this marble to the side, if we say, oh man, that's sad, man, Lord, thank you for the time. But then what if we said, hey Lord, with what I have left in this jar, would you help me be intentional with my kids? Mm. And, and that will just change our world. Yeah. Um, if we said, Lord, help us weekly with the time we have left to be intentional, to teach our kids the Shema, to teach our kids to love the Lord, mm -hmm. um, and, and not be sad, but be excited uh, for what God's gonna do through them, 
and the part you get to have in leaving that legacy that goes beyond you far after we're gone that our kids get to continue to pass to their kids and their kids and continue on um, I mean that's what we got from uh, from Moses right as he passed yeah. this on to us and look at where we're at now as a people group and, and we want to continue that Oh, I love that. Well, thank you for coming on today yeah. and, and sharing all your marbles with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I haven't lost them all yet, right? Oh, that's good. Yeah, keep the lids on so you don't lose any more. <laughs> but no, this has been great. The link the, the link for that app that Pastor Dan talked about, ParentQ, that will be in the description. So if you want to check that out and download it, you can do that. And tell us what you thought about this. Tell us, you know, maybe after the tears have subsided, <laughs> what was your big takeaway from today's episode? I would love to hear from you in the comments. So tell us what you think. And until next week, I hope you have a great Thursday. Have a great week. <laughs>